And surprising news on Saturday, the New York Knicks agreed to trade the 10-time All-Star Carmelo Anthony to the Oklahoma City Thunder in exchange receiving Ennis Cantor, Doug McDermott, and a 2018 second-round pick. Meanwhile, Melo agreed to waive his no-trade clause and his $8.1 million trade kicker to accommodate the deal, expected to be finalized on Monday. And with less than 30 days until the NBA's opening night, we welcome in our Chris Webber, TNT analyst, among many other things. And Chris, uh, OKC's matchup against the Knicks during TNT's opening week just became a bit more exciting, huh? Uh, it, it is. It's, it's, uh, it's going to be really exciting, especially when you look at uh, the first game uh, of the season. Uh, with uh, with Kyrie uh, going back uh, to play against his team in Cleveland, and now uh, it's going to be some really exciting games. That's what you got to love about the NBA is the fact that our off seasons sometimes move with the pace of our of our you know mid season stride. So it's very exciting right now. And Chris Mello had agreed to waive his no trade clause for Houston. Later, he added Cleveland and OKC. Why though was the Thunder the right fit here? Well, I'm really not sure. I think first and foremost is his relationship with other players. Uh, Billy Donovan is not a veteran coach, and so it's not a situation where you would leave your team to go play for that coach, and that's nothing bad speaking about Donovan. It's just the truth. Uh, he's only been in the league two, maybe three years, and so he has a learning curve. I think it's the fact that you trust each other. And when I see uh, moves like this, you know, uh, I woke up this morning, Kevin Cottrell had a bunch of stats for me, and it's just incredible. I think when you look at Carmelo and the fact that he shoots 48, 41%, 42% from the three-point line on catch and shoot. And I've always said he's one of the best catch and shoot players in the game, but he's never really played with great point guards to give him the ball. And now I think that we'll be able to see Westbrook, who still will be dominant, who still should take the last shots of the game or have the ball in his hands in last possession of the game, now be able to drive, kick it to the corner to some great knockdown shooters and guys that he can trust. So um, I, I just think it's just going to be exciting, and that's why uh, I think he waived that trade call to play with talent. It's much easier as a, as, a, as a really great player on your team to play with other players that garner the same respect defensively and the same respect um, from coaches. And, and now uh, Melo has that in two younger players. So uh, I, I could definitely see why uh, OKC seemed to be greener pastures for him. As we look at the bigger picture, Chris, how does this affect the landscape of the league besides the obvious one less all-star in the East? Yeah, well, you know, he's the fourth All-Star, the Eastern All-Star to leave and, and head west. And I can tell you personally, it's much more fun to play ball in the west uh, because of the style of play. And the styles of play are drastically uh, different. But, but very honestly, um, I, I don't see a championship. I, I, I see a learning curve. Uh, this probably isn't the, the last move that they have to make. Anytime you have a player like Melo score 10,000 points, uh, one or two players or three players to score 10,000 points for two teams, it's just incredible the potential that they have. The same with Westbrook, former MVP, the same with George. Uh, but, you know, I still think that with the loss of Cantor, who was a post scorer, defensively, how teams are going to try to run or maybe attack Melo on defense. Um, I mean, I still think that you have to look at teams that have been together much longer as teams that maybe have an upper hand, such as the San Antonio, uh, such as. Um, uh, Golden State and, and maybe even for some the Clippers but it should be interesting this year and we've talked about these super teams having to sacrifice statistically you mentioned that reigning MVP on the roster Russell Westbrook having averaged a triple double how now do you best distribute this ball among a roster of all-stars uh, I'm one of the guys that think that you can do it I mean I, I think that if anything his assists will go up this year I mean, if he took the same number of shots and made the same number of passes as he did last year, and four more guys just make shots, I mean, they have a better record already. So um, I, one thing you always want to have is a great point guard. I've been blessed to play with a couple of them. And so I think he'll facilitate, get the guys in their spot. He'll learn them, understand it. And, and this is the best thing about it is that now, you know, how, what's the defense going to do? It, it's really, you know, you take what the defense gives you. So when he comes off a of pick and roll of mellow, that's a hell of a decision-making uh, exercise real quick of who to go to. So he'll make the correct pass. Other players will make the correct pass because there's only five defensive players on the floor, but it usually takes two to stop their main three. So it's going to be uh, definitely interesting. And uh, Donovan uh, has his hands full. He has to get creative, and uh, he's going to have to earn that coaching check right now uh, to put some nice offenses in there to see what these players can do. And on the other end of that trade deal, the Knicks, how will Ennis Cantor and Doug McDermott fit in? And what needs to happen now to propel this team forward? 
Well, as a player, when you get traded, sometimes it's a moment of clarity, whether it is because someone believes in you that much and they want you on their team and you have to raise your game, or it's a moment of purgatory, like, what do I do? I'm going to a place with not that great of a team. I'm going to a different situation. And for Cantor, uh, he's one of the big fellas that I've loved this game, a traditional back-to-the-basket player, can score, uh, can get to the bucket, get to the foul line, really great on offense. Defense, he struggles. And so now is he going to make that commitment for Horn the second and for that team there uh, to, to be on the defensive sideline. That's where he is. McDermott has a lot to prove. You know, he's been known as a shooter, um, but he has a, a, a lot to prove. Uh, shooting this league is just not enough. you got to uh, have all the things I'm sure he has, but that's heart, grit, grind, toughness on the defensive end, a willingness to play on both ends of the floor. And right now he's going to have that opportunity every night in there at a place where the fans let you know how they feel. And, the fans in New York are very knowledgeable, so uh, they, they hold you uh, to high standards there. So uh, I, I think for New York, the organization, Scott Perry uh, did as best of a job he could in a situation like this. They have some really good young talent, and you know, hopefully that 2018 or that, that second-round draft pick will come in good form. But right now, uh, I, I, I feel like uh, Cantor and, and, and the big unicorn there are really going to you know, have to develop some chemistry and kill it inside. And these two teams will go head to head during our opening week on TNT. And talking to you, Chris Weber, gets me a little bit more excited for it. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, always talking to you gets me excited. Can't wait for basketball, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> All right, Chris.